First up, the U.S. presidential contenders Kamala Harris and Donald Trump have traded attacks and accusations in a fiery debate that could shift the narrative in a tightly fought race to the White House. While Harris claimed that the former president made a mess of the economy and dealt a blow to the American democracy, the Republican shot back calling Harris a Marxist. The Democratic vice president and Republican former president shook hands to the surprise of many when they took to the podiums in the National Constitutional Center in Philadelphia. But the niceties ended soon. Now, within minutes, Trump claimed that Harris and President Joe Biden had allowed millions of people pouring into our country from prisons and jails, from mental institutions and insane asylums. Harris hit back at Trump, pointing out that he was a convicted felon, calling him extreme. Now, dismissing Trump's boast that he had uh, unprecedented economic successes as president, she said that in reality what we have done is clean up Donald Trump's mess. She also slammed Trump's management of the COVID-19 pandemic and his instigation of attempts to overthrow the 2020 election. Now on the issue of economy, Kamala Harris uh, claimed that she has a plan to help people. However, she has not outlined the details of that plan. Trump has accused Biden-Harris administration of leading the country to the highest figures of inflation. Trump said the people of our country are absolutely dying with what they've done. They've destroyed the economy. Now, their most intense uh, exchange was an abortion, with Trump insisting that while having pushed for the end of the federal right to abortion, he wanted individual states to make their own policy. Well, Kamala Harris uh, tried to get under Trump's skin by needling him on one of his favorite topics, the size of trademark rallies and attendees, she said, uh, were leaving early out of exhaustion and boredom at his rallies. between Donald Trump and Kamala Harris, of course, uh, on that presidential debate on ABC. And of course, uh, initial polls have suggested that Kamala Harris has fared better than Donald Trump. There was a post, uh, a poll by Washington Post soon after and ABC as well that indicated that Kamala Harris had better numbers than uh, Donald Trump. But of course, uh, still some time left for uh, the final election. And this will, of course, determine uh, who uh, will actually win the elections. All right, and these are live visuals that you're getting at the moment um, from America uh, of Donald Trump. And at the 9-11 memorial there, of course, there's President Joe Biden as well and Kamala Harris as well there. Um, at that memorial and of course this comes just hours after that debate and Donald Trump of course has been known to be extremely aggressive uh, during his debates and this was something that of course uh, uh, was told to Kamala Harris repeatedly to not take the bait as far as Donald Trump is concerned he agitates uh, his opponent and of course this is not his first time uh, Kamala Harris's presidential debate debut of course went pretty well um, she has just taken on the mantle from Joe Biden just a few weeks ago but has done remarkably better in the last couple of weeks and this is of course a neck and neck uh, fight between these two opponents and just 56 days left to that election uh, which will be of course keenly watched all over the world for its results uh, and uh, of course, those visuals there coming from New York of the 9-11 memorial. All right, to add more to this, we are now being joined by VOA correspondent Catherine Gibson, who is live with us from Philadelphia. And, uh, well, Catherine, uh, good talking to you this evening. Well, Donald Trump is well versed with the style and tactics of a presidential debate, given that this is not his first run. Uh, if we were to compare that with Kamala Harris's debut as a presidential candidate and this debate, how is America viewing this debate and who fared how? Right. So it's an interesting point that you bring up that Donald Trump is very familiar with the tactics of a debate. We've even seen him debate a female presidential candidate before Hillary Clinton in 2016. 
This time, of course, was a little bit different. Kamala Harris has that prosecutor background. She was a lawyer. She was a prosecutor. And when they both walked into the debate venue for the first time, that was the very first time that they were meeting. Kamala Harris made an effort to go over to Donald Trump, made an effort to shake his hand, almost had to go beyond his podium to do that, and really established early on that she was not going to give ground in this first meeting of theirs. And that continued throughout the debate. You know, I think Donald Trump did get a lot of good points in, in terms of asking Kamala Harris how she would differ from Joe Biden and his presidency. She is, of course, the vice president for Joe Biden. She is associated with his policies. But really, when we step back and take a look at the debate, we see that she was able to lead Donald Trump off of his talking points and into some of the more unusual theories and things that he has about January 6th, the attack on the U.S. Capitol, and these theories about what immigrants are doing in U.S. cities. That was an effective tactic. So even though she is still a little bit behind in the polls in some of those key battleground states across the nation. This was an effective night for her. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Kathleen, there were, of course, as you said, you know, substantive differences on immigration and abortion and economy. Uh, some of those lines are pretty clear over what policies the Democrats take and the Republicans uh, follow on these issues. But was Kamala Harris able to bait Donald Trump or was it the other way around? Well, you mentioned immigration and that was one instance where he was supposed to be answering a question about immigration and instead diverted and addressed some of Kamala Harris's uh, elements and claims about his crowds, about how his crowds leave his rallies sometimes. She was claiming that they don't enjoy his rallies. So he was able to get distracted by that. And instead of answering a question about immigration and the Biden administration's record on immigration, he instead addressed the issue of crowd size and rallies and kind of got off track on that answer. Right, Catherine, thanks very much indeed for joining us and talking to us this evening. Of course, still 56 days left to that vote and much can change uh, between that. Uh, great talking to you. For all the latest news, download the Vion app and subscribe to our YouTube channel.